Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be cutting my hair together um, because quarantine. No, but um, I always just cut my hair. I grew up with my mom cutting my hair and then me cutting my hair and then me cutting her hair and my friend's hair and I'm not a professional by any means. I haven't learned any professional techniques, but this is just what I've learned from just cutting hair my whole life, really. And I get quite a lot of questions about my hair and I don't really talk about it because, um, well, there's not that much really to talk about, but I did ask you on Instagram if you have any questions that you want me answering, send it over. So I've got a list of those and I'll be answering those throughout this video as well. Hopefully I'll be able to answer all of your pressing questions. If you have any more, feel free to leave them in the comments of this video so I can come and answer them. And um, yeah, let's just get into the video. So first of all, this is at a weird angle because you are actually propped up on top of my full length mirror, which I have in front of me here, which I'll be using to cut my hair. So for a lot of this video, I'll probably be looking here and not there as much because I need to be looking at what I'm doing. Um, so what we're doing today is, this is what my hair uh, currently looks like. This is it just like natural, there's nothing in it, I haven't done anything to it. I washed it maybe about three days ago and just let it air dry and this is what my hair looks like naturally. I have a fringe which is really grown out so if I just push it forwards here you can see that it kind of goes into my eyes and it's a little bit too long so I'm going to be trimming that. I get a lot of questions about how I trim my own fringe so I'll be showing you how I do it here. Again, not professional techniques but it's what works for me and it's what creates this result. So um, that's going to be coming up a little bit and then also my hair is just so like, I have really heavy hair, I have quite a lot of it and so it just kind of lays flat and as you can tell I don't really have that much texture in my hair when it's long it kind of like loses its wave completely and it's just pinned straight so what I'm gonna be doing is taking the weight out of it a little bit by trimming a couple of inches off the ends and then putting in some light layers as well so that's what we're gonna be doing today and hopefully it'll help you if you're gonna be giving yourself a haircut as well and maybe you want to try a fringe or you just want to like give a trim hopefully this will help the tools I'm gonna to be using today include a scrunchie to tie my hair back when I'm doing my fringe. A little jar of hair clips, just like these regular kind of hair clips. And a comb and some hairdressing scissors. These don't have to be super expensive ones, just as long as they're hair scissors, so they're designed to cut hair. They'll be a lot better at it than using kitchen scissors or stationary scissors. And they're finer as well, so you can get more detail in there, which is great for the fringe. So first off, I think we're gonna go for the fringe so that I can get my eyesight back and see what I'm doing for the rest of my head. I'm gonna be tying the rest of my hair back so that I can just fully focus on the fringe and not accidentally cut other little pieces as well. So the first thing that I do is brush my hair straight. And because I have like pretty straight hair, I don't wet it. I also find that it looks very different. I like to cut, oh, I can't see you. I like to cut dry so that I know what it looks like at the end. If I wet it and then cut it, when it dries it looks slightly different, so I like to just cut it as it is. I know there are different preferences, cutting your hair wet or dry. If you have more of a texture, a wave or a curl in your hair, maybe not curl, but if you have like wavier hair, then maybe um, dump in your comb before you do it so that it can lie a little bit straighter. And then what I do is take a comb and I'll just kind of like cut it in half and take just the under layer down so that I can do it in half because I have quite a full fringe I kind of do the under layer and then the top layer uh, it just makes it more accurate so I'll just put half of it up like that <laughs> now I have a very wispy fringe it also means that if I make any mistakes they're kind of like hidden under here and I can kind of get the practice in before I do the, the top layer which is more obvious and then I just kind of start point cutting which means that you're holding your scissors and cutting upwards like this rather than cutting across because I'm not going for that fully blunt look although my fringe is quite straight and full I don't want it to be like completely blunt I want it to look a little bit more natural and grown out so I start point cutting and the shape that I'm going for is kind of straight across somewhat and then it goes down a little bit and I'm going to be cutting some more like face framing bits in as well. So I want this bit to kind of be a little bit longer than this bit just so it's more graduated. I did not mean for this to turn into like a hair cutting tutorial. Honestly, I just wanted to show you how I cut my hair, which is not. I didn't think there was that much detail in it, but here we go. I'm giving you all my tips. Hopefully you can see what's going on. Maybe I'll come a bit closer. So I'm just like holding it out with the comb, brushing it straight and then holding it so that I can point cut it and it's not against my face and I'm going to be cutting my eyebrows off or something. 
And I always start in the middle so that I know that I can go off both the sides. So if I get the middle of the length that I want it, and then I can match the sides up, they're gonna be pretty even across rather than starting from the side and then it being a bit higgledy-piggledy. Also be careful, if you are wetting your fringe before you do this, know that the water is gonna make it a little bit heavier and look a little bit longer and when it dries, it's gonna bounce up a little bit. So maybe cut it slightly longer than you wanna see it in the end. Because I'm cutting it dry, I'm just gonna cut it exactly how I want it. Okay, so now that is a good length, a little bit shorter, I'm gonna take down the top layer and that'll be kind of a, like a template for where I wanna cut the top layer to. So I'm just gonna do the same again. This is great if you're doing it for the first time as well because it means that if you're making mistakes, it's on the under layer and then you can just kind of fix it with the top layer. Learn from your mistakes and try again. Kind of gives you a second chance. So again, I'm gonna be starting from the middle and just point cutting it until it's about the length that I want. It's a really forgiving way of cutting your hair as well because you're not gonna be like making a very obvious cut. Like every time I cut, you won't be able to tell the difference. It's only after point cutting this like a few times that you're gonna start gradually seeing a bit of a difference. So you can't really go wrong with it unless you overdo it. So every now and again, I'll just kind of step back and take a look and reassess. You can also use, if you're not comfortable with a comb or you don't have a comb, oftentimes I'll just use my fingers by holding it like that and trying to keep it in its shape and not pull it out too much from the head, just a little bit, so it keeps its shape so I still am cutting in the right direction. And I'll just trim it like that. Sometimes you get a better hold of it. And I found also that the higher up you go, the more wispy it is. So if you just kind of are like point cutting the very ends like this, it's gonna be slightly more blunt than if you were to get take chunks and go like that. It's gonna make it a little lighter and wispier because you're cutting more hair off into it, if that makes sense. And if you're cutting your fringe for the very first time, you don't actually have a fringe yet, then section off what you want. You can look up tutorials. I know that Brad Mondo makes really great tutorials. I'll link his channel down below. Um, I'm not sure if he has one on making a fringe, but he probably does somewhere. You want to section it off and then bring the hair forward that you want. And then it's pretty much the same technique. Instead of me just trimming it like this, it's going to be longer hair and I'm going to be trimming it with longer hair. So it's kind of the similar technique. The important thing with doing it for the first time is just sectioning it off correctly. So I think that that is about good. It took me just a few minutes and it's still long but it's not getting in my eyes. And that's about it. So I'm gonna take the rest of my hair down and this is what I'm really excited for. Taking the weight out of this. So I'm just gonna brush through it. My hair always goes super staticky when I do this. Can you see that? neighbors are drilling through the wall hopefully you can't hear that but we'll just have to be louder than them because everybody is home right now and doing maintenance on their hair and their homes so what I'm gonna do now is because I have so much hair it'll be way too much to cut it all at once I'm gonna be doing like what I did with my fringe and do the top layer and then the bottom layer so I'm gonna section this off about halfway just above my ears all the way around so then I'm gonna section this bottom layer into two pieces, which is way more manageable to cut. Now, the, this is actually very tricky to do by yourself, and I'm probably gonna have to call in Peter to help me at some point, because I'm gonna be overstretching the hair that's coming from the back, like the nape here. It's gonna be longer because I'm pulling it over here and then cutting it, and when it goes back to where it lies normally, it's gonna be longer. So, cutting it this way by bringing it all to the front is actually gonna make it have that kind of curved, um, cut at the back it's gonna come kind of curved rather than straight across if that makes sense um, so then I'm gonna have Peter come in and kind of flatten the curve like what we do with coronavirus 
If you don't have anyone to help you do that, there are other methods you can use by kind of sectioning it off and then um, putting it in ponytails and then cutting it that way. You can look that up online. Again, this is just how I do my hair and usually I've got someone on hand to kind of help me out. If not, I'll kind of just do my best and, you know, sometimes just take the scissors to the back. <laughs> So right now I'm just going to choose how long I want it and I think I'm going to take maybe like an inch and a half, two inches off. Even though it's only a little bit, it always feels so much lighter afterwards and it really takes the weight out, especially then when I add layers later on. So I'm going to keep my head forward facing and then I've got it pinched in between my fingers so I can bring it up and point cut it here because I pu pulled it taut. So when I go like that, the hair is still in the same position as it is when it's down here. But you have to make sure that you have a really good grip of it. And then again, I'm just point cutting. Okay, so already you see it's shorter than this side by just a little bit. But it doesn't look like I've just gone and cut it. It looks like it's naturally grown out that length. So the ends of it looks the same. Let's see if I can tilt you down. Ooh. So the ends still look kind of natural and grown out the same way that these do. It's just that this is shorter and that's what we're going for. I don't know if I want to go a little bit shorter still. I think I'll leave it at that for now. And then I'm going to be matching up this side. Just stepping over my pile of hair on the floor here. So then this is the bit that needs a little bit more focus because I need to match this side up to this side. And a tip, if you're cutting more hair than this, like if you can't point cut all the way up because you're cutting like a, like a foot of hair or something, then you can do um, a little straight cross cut and then point cut it out to like blend it a little bit nicer. So I'll just show you here. Like imagine you had loads of hair though. <laughs> If it's the, if I'm just cutting like this bit off, just like a little bit of a trim, then I'll just point cut it until it looks right. But if you are cutting more off, you can blunt cut it a little bit like that just to get the weight off and then point cut it out to blend it out again. like right now and then I'm going to be taking all of this out and do the same again. So as you can see the bottom layer is going to look like a guide the same way that the fringe did. You can see that here's the bottom layer here and here's the top layer here. So all I need to do is match up these two lengths. I might actually section it off again just to do this very top layer, the crown layer separately because there's just so much hair here. And you can section it off as many times as you want. If you're doing this for the first time, you can even section it off into four or five pieces if you want, just so that if you're nervous, you can get it. Um, you can do like smaller layers each time just to get the practice in in case you make a mistake or something. Okay, I think that's more manageable just to match it up. And now I know exactly I need to cut all of this off. And keep checking. If you're scared that you're like cutting too much off, just throw it down, keep checking, assure yourself that you haven't, <laughs> and then bring it up again. I think that looks good for now. Obviously, later on, I can kind of finesse it a little bit more. Also, when I throw it to the back, I think Peter's gonna come in here and help um, make it a little bit more straight, so I'll I didn't have to be perfect right now. I can, at the end, do the finessing touches. So I'm just gonna do the other side and I'll be right back. Okay, so those two levels match up. And now the top layer, which is gonna be just the same thing over again, to be honest. But then we'll get into answering your questions in a bit when Peter comes in and helps me out with the back. At this point, it's really easy to see the bits that stand out because like this bit is so much longer than the rest of it. So I can just take small pieces up. Okay, so here is where we are. It's all lined up. However, it looks nice here. <laughs> Chances are when I take it to the back, 
it's gonna have that dipped look. See, I can't see it, but I bet I'm gonna have to trim in the middle a little bit. Does it, does it look like scooped? You know what to do. How do I do it again? So I think while you do that, I'm going to be reading off questions. Yeah. I've got all your questions here. I'm going to be reading them out. I don't know how to do it. I guess from the side. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is, do you have any natural solutions for dandruff? I've never had dandruff myself, but I know that uh, if you have an irritated scalp or if you have like um, dry flaky bits on your scalp, that um, an apple cider vinegar wash works really well. So if you just mix about 50-50 apple cider vinegar and water, and after you've shampooed and conditioned your hair, you kind of um, squirt it on your scalp a little bit and let it sit there for like three to five minutes. And you do that every time you wash your hair, that should really help. If I leave my hair one day without washing, it's full of grease, what could help? It sounds like you're washing your hair too much. If you're washing it every other day, that's going to create, like, you're going to be washing all the natural oils off your scalp and it's going to trigger your body to make more oil and it's going to have a buildup of sebum and it's going to make your hair look really oily and greasy. I have trouble with that as well. I have naturally very oily skin and hair and scalp and when I wash it more often, it just produces more oil. So you're going to have to suck it up for a little bit and just live with oily hair and try and wash your hair less. Maybe take it down to, if you're doing it every other day, do it every three days and then every four days and just try it out. What's your hair care routine, i.e. shampoo, etc.? So I have a shampoo that I buy, the one that I'm currently using, I buy it from my local bulk shop. It's a liquid shampoo. It comes without packaging, so that's why I like it. It's local, plant-based, vegan-friendly, it's cruelty-free, it's pretty natural, so it's not got like a load of harsh chemicals in it and it works really well with my hair, so that's the one I use at the moment. I know that's not very helpful for everybody else. I've tried all the shampoo bars. If you've been following me for a few years, I went through a whole like hair care, what's the word? Adventure. <laughs> Adventure, series. I like posted a series of videos all about my hair care. I was trying like no poo and like trying different like natural shampooing methods and like none of them really worked for me in the long term. So this is what I'm currently with at the moment, but I feel your struggle. I find that finding a good shampoo, especially for my kind of heavy oily hair type, is very challenging. Um, so yeah, that's the shampoo I use. And then I use conditioner, again, bought from the same line and from the same shop. And that's all I use. I, may, I have an oil that I use for my skincare, my face, that I also will put a few drops in my hair if it's dry. So through winter, I'll just kind of put it through the ends of my hair, but that's it. And I don't use any products or any heat styling. I don't have a hair dryer. I just let it naturally air dry. And that's my entire routine. Do you shower cold? Uh, no, but I would want to. I'm actually gonna do a month of cold showers and I'll be documenting that. So that's something to look forward to soon because I'm really into um, exposing myself to kind of challenging things and I'd like to cold shower, especially that I live near the sea now. I'd like to swim in the sea um, even when it's colder and I want to get my body kind of acclimated to colder temperatures for that. Have you ever dyed your hair an unnatural colour? Oh my god, yes. I, when I was a teenager, every weekend, I cut my hair, I coloured my hair, I did everything, I bleached it. So what colours have I been? I've been bright orange accidentally because I tried to go like a fox red brown. I've been green accidentally because I tried bleaching out too much colour and it just went green. Um, on purpose, I've been blonde, brunette, um, what other colours? I haven't done like blue or purple or pink or anything like that. It was mainly cutting my hair lots of different styles and lengths. So I had like pixie cut, bobs, fringe, long hair, I've had it all. Anything to help my hair grow quicker. Best thing for our hair, because it's just like our nails and our teeth and our skin, is just to eat healthily. So I'm plant-based and I eat mainly whole foods. So my hair is gonna reflect that. It's gonna be healthy because of what I'm putting in it. Um, so I think as long as you're eating well, then, and then you just leave it alone. Like try not to use any heat styling things on it or products, don't put like silicones or perfumes anywhere near it and just kind of leave it alone, eat well and trim it when it starts splitting. And that's about it. How often do you cut it? Um, I cut my fringe pretty regularly, maybe twice a month. And then I trim this whenever I feel like it. So when was the last time we cut my hair? A couple of months ago. Yeah, 
maybe like two months. That's because I like it this length and then it grows out and I just want to keep cutting it. But if I was growing my hair out, uh, I would just cut it when it got split ends, maybe like once or twice a year. But again, it depends on your hair type. Some people have drier, more brittle hair than I do, so in that case, it would be more regularly. I, I want to like face the camera, but I also want you to do a good job. <laughs> How is yours so smooth? I air dry mine and it's a fluffy mess. It only goes smooth if I blow dry it. Well, like the same thing. So I wash my hair in the evening, because if I wash it in the morning, then it just kind of goes a bit poofy. Um, so I wash it at night time and then I sleep on it and by the morning it's kind of like flattened out a bit So that really helps. So try washing it at night time, putting it in plaits while you sleep in it Works great. How often do you wash it? About twice a week. I'd like to go less but my hair is so oily and so heavy that I do need to wash it I'll wash my fringe in between because this is like against my forehead so it goes oilier faster than the rest of my hair um, but like mm, about, I try and do it once a week, but it's usually about twice a week. How do you use sulfate-free natural shampoo? It always leaves my hair so greasy. So this is the problem that I had with shampoo bars, is that they always left my hair really oily, it left like a residue on it. They, I just, I tried so many and I just couldn't get on with it. I find that liquid shampoo works the best for my hair. So just try and find one that's more natural, sulfate, perfume, free and just the best. I don't, I don't really have a good recommended a good recommendation at the moment. When I do, I'll let you know. But at the moment, that's what I'm using. Love your hair. Do you cut your own fringe? If so, tips please. Yes, and you just saw how I how I trim my fringe. What do you recommend for a natural scalp mask? So I use just oil on the scalp. Um, you can use things like. Um, oat milk is really good, it's very moisturizing and nourishing and calming if you've got like um, psoriasis or a skin condition or just really sensitive skin then oat milk, you can like milk your own oats and then save that and put that in your hair, that works really well. Um, otherwise I just use oil, I wouldn't recommend coconut oil just for the fact that it hardens so if you get it in like the, these bits in your hair it can like solidify and then it's harder to wash out. Um, but jojoba oil works well, avocado oil, neem oil. Oh, the doorbell's going. Can you go? Yeah, I'll go again. <laughs> I'll just continue with the questions. <laughs> what foods in your diet do you think contributes to healthier hair? All of it, because I have a plant-based diet, they all have vital nutrients and micronutrients and they all contribute to healthier hair. Having a balanced diet in general is gonna be the best thing. Um, but oilier foods like nuts and seeds is gonna be good. Um, but just a balanced diet. I don't think you really need to specifically focus on one thing that you're taking for your hair. I think it's all about how they all work together. It's more holistic than that. So just have a balanced whole foods, plant-based diet and your hair should reflect that. Do you use dry shampoo? I do actually, let me get it. So I have this DIY dry shampoo that I've made from arrowroot powder with a little bit of cocoa powder in it just to make it a darker color so it's suits my hair so it's not just white going in there in case you can see some of it and that's what I use. I'll just kind of sprinkle that some of it in and massage it in and that's good for especially my fringe and if you have oilier hair like me and the top kind of gets oilier while the rest of it doesn't really need washing yet, dry shampoo is great. Let me show, show the hands up, that looks like. So tell them what you're doing. So, um, so to begin with it was a lot longer in the middle, so it kind of had like a um, an oval shape going down like that. So I've been trying to um, make sure that that isn't the case anymore. How do you hold the scissors? Oh, how do I hold the scissors? Like, do you point cut it or do you cut straight across? Um, so at the moment I was cutting straight across. <gasps> you were? <laughs> <laughs> but, That's not what I've been telling them. <laughs> but that was because the last time we did it, um, it was to because it was quite a lot. Um, so I was gonna then change okay. it and cut up. Cut across and then feather yeah. it out. Yeah, and then okay. cover it That's out. That's fine. <laughs> freaked me out then. Blue's been telling me to like kind of like take a piece of hair um, and then you hold it between two fingers close to her, her back so it's all straight and then make these little... Point cuts. What are they called? Point cuts. Point cuts. Okay, I'm gonna set point. Yeah. You can see how the next from Peter. <laughs> This is what, like, the third time you've done it. He'd never cut anyone's hair before, and I told him, You have to cut my hair, you have to help me, because 
it's so much easier for him to see what he's doing than if I was to like reach back. Hang on, my hair, head is tired. It's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> um, some of these are the same questions over again. When was the last time you used heat on it? Mm, I got rid of my hair dryer maybe three or four years ago, but that's because I hadn't used it for a few years and so it was just sitting there. So I want to say maybe about eight to 10 years ago was the last time I like blow dried my hair and I never really used tools before that. I had like a curling one once that I just kind of like played around with, but I pretty much always just let it do its natural thing. I'm not that much of like a hair styler person. <laughs> How often do you comb your hair? Um, I think, like you mean with a hairbrush, like brush my hair. I brush my hair right before I wash it, just so I get any like knots and tangles out before I go in and wash it. And then I'll brush it when I've got the conditioner in my hair, because um, I have very naturally tangly hair, so it's difficult to get the brush through it otherwise, especially when it's wet, it just doesn't go in. So I'll um, condition it and then kind of brush the conditioner through and then that'll be it. Because when I brush it, it goes really static and fluffy and it makes the top look really oily. I find that if the more I just leave it and let it just do its own thing, the better it looks and the healthier it is anyway. What shampoo do you use and how do you sleep with it? Like a bun or covering? Um, I don't do anything. So when I've washed it and then I've plaited it so it gives me some volume and some wave, I'll sleep with it in like two or one French plaits. Otherwise, I just sleep with it like this. I don't put it up or anything, I just kind of, I don't do anything. Is it necessary to cut it regularly for it to be healthy? And if so, how regularly? Um, you're gonna get split ends at some point if you just let it grow for years and years and years. If you do get split ends, you're gonna wanna cut them off, otherwise they're just gonna keep growing, they're gonna keep splitting up and they'll break off and it'll become very brittle. So just as soon as you see split ends, just cut like, what is it, like a centimeter off and then it'll help it grow a little bit faster. But you shouldn't see split ends too often unless you're really damaging your hair. So maybe like once or twice a year you wanna trim them off. How often do you trim your tips? I trim often, but they still get split a few weeks afterwards. It sounds like you're not trimming it enough because the split ends can often like rise up and keep splitting. So you wanna make sure that you're cutting all of them off, not just the ends. So if your split ends are like an inch, you wanna cut that inch off, otherwise it'll just keep going, it'll keep splitting up further and further. So even if you have to cut a couple of inches off to get them off, you just wanna get them off and be done with it and then start growing it back out again. Is it natural? Yeah, this is just my completely grown out natural hair. How do you make your hair look and be so healthy? Again, it's mainly what I eat, keeping heat off it, shampooing and brushing it, not very regularly. Um, I often, like, I just don't do anything to it. Do you have hard water or soft water? We have hard water where we are. It's not as hard as London where I was living before, but it's still pretty hard. And I would actually really like to get a filter to make it softer, but I don't know, we haven't got around to doing that yet. Have you ever shaved it? No, but I think about this all the time. Don't I talk about it all the time? I really want to shave my head. I will do it at some point. When I'm bored with it being this long, which is inevitable, I will just, I think I'll just take it all off. I think it'll be really satisfying to go from it being really long to shaved, rather than like cutting it short and then shaving it. I just wanna go for it. So I will do it at some point, but I haven't yet. How do you build a healthy relationship with your hair? I sometimes don't like mine at all. Um, if I don't like it, I just change it up. I'm not that attached to my hair, I've been, I've done all sorts with my hair. I've cut it really short, so it's like pixie cut. I've had it really long. Like I said, I've just done loads of stuff to my hair. I just find it really fun. It's like another form of expression. And so when I don't like it, I just change it up. What like what I don't like about it. Like at the moment, I haven't liked that it's so heavy, uh, which means I have to wash it more because it gets more oily and it just kind of like, ugh, is a bit long. And now that spring and summer is coming, I want it off my face a little bit more. So I'm, I'm doing that. I'm cutting some weight off it. I'm gonna be putting some layers through it. And when I get bored of that, I can change it up again. I can cut it even shorter if I want, or I can grow it out more, whatever. If you don't love what your hair is doing, then change it up. Experiment a little bit, have fun, be free. It always grows back, it's just hair. Do you have any DIY styling products that you recommend? I've heard that you can like make 
like a gel from linseed, like making a linseed gel, but I've never used that personally myself and I don't know how well that works. I don't use anything on my hair, no styling products or anything, like homemade, DIY or otherwise. I just love your haircut. What live, I think they mean like leave-in conditioner do you use? I don't, I just don't. So those are all the questions. This looks like it's almost done as well. Yeah, perfect timing. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. I'm always in the comment section answering. So this will be the video to ask those hair related questions. I think it's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Trust you? <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have my scissors back? Oh yeah. That was really creepy just like holding them. <laughs> okay, so you, you can see the back before I can see it. I have no idea what that looks like. But that's the ends taken off, the fringe lightened up. Now all I'm gonna do now is do some light layering. And this bit is really, really fun because I don't do it in a professional way at all. I just do it the way that I do it, the way that my mom's always done it. And that is by grabbing your scissors and taking random pieces. I know all the hairdressers, if any of them are watching, are gonna be freaking out. But what I do is take kind of smaller pieces and I'll take my scissors like this kind of trim it like that. I don't know how to describe it other than I'm just kind of like blading it. And so it's just like falling a little bit lighter here. And I'll just do that in like random chunks around my head. And it just really takes the weight out. And it makes it like point cutting because it's like random because I'm going up and down rather than just going straight across. You can see that it's kind of like feathered out but it's so much quicker than point cutting and if I'm just doing little bits around here and there I find that it works really well then the last thing I'm gonna do is get some face framing bits so what I do is kind of put my hair up in how I would hold it as a ponytail but I don't put it in yet so I can easily like loosen pieces around my face and I'll just pull out any pieces that I'd want to cut into more face framing pieces. You can see that I've already got some like shorter bits from where I've done this before, which I'm going to be trimming again and maybe bringing out some new pieces. What you want to do is make sure that they're not all the same length, you don't just want to like cut them. So you want to kind of get longer pieces and shorter pieces and just play around with it until you find what you like. And I'm just going to cut it in the same way that I cut the other layers in my hair, maybe I should come closer. If you want, you can also just point cut these pieces because they're, they're little. Okay, I think that's it. So this is how I cut my hair at home. I hope it's been entertaining, if not helpful, and there's a ton of hair on the floor right here. And um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that I answered all your questions. And if you have any more, like I said before, leave them down below, and I'll try and answer them. And I hope that Brad Mondo doesn't come for me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.